I'm Mohamed Moti from uh, the Sorbonne University and Saint Antoine Hospital in Paris, in France. And uh, it is my uh, great pleasure to comment today on uh, uh, the abstract from the uh, American Society of Hematology 2023 annual meeting uh, entitled uh, Results of the Completed Dose Escalation Portion for the phase one study of HPN217, which is a tri-specific T-cell activating construct called the TREETAC, targeting BCMA for relapse refractory multiple myeloma. And this uh, uh, was presented by Dr. Sumit Madan and uh, uh, colleagues. So just a big, a quick uh, uh, background about uh, HPN217. So this is a BCMA targeting T cell engager that uh, would redirect T cells to kill BCMA expressing multiple myeloma cells. And it has three uh, binding domains. First one is BCMA for multiple myeloma cell binding. Then you have CD3 for T cell engagement. And then you have albumin for half life uh, extension. And actually, uh, the absence of the uh, FC domain uh, avoid FC receptor binding, and that would minimize T cell activation in the absence of target cells. And uh, this construct is designed to increase the uh, therapeutic window and the work that was presented at ASH 2023 uh, was about the first results from this first in human study. So as you may guess, it is a phase one dose escalation study, the traditional three plus three dose uh, escalation followed by dose uh, expansion. The primary objectives were about safety and tolerability, but it was also about estimating MTD and or identifying the RP2D. And obviously efficacy was a key secondary objective. In terms of eligibility or inclusion criteria, we're talking about relapse refractory multiple myeloma who received at least three prior lines of therapy, including a proteasome inhibitor, an IMID, and an anti-CD38 uh, antibody. It is important to note that prior treatment with BCMA-targeted therapies uh, was uh, allowed as part of this study. So in total, 97 patients were reported. The median age was 69 up to age 85. Roughly 20% had high-risk cytogenetics, 10% had plasmocytoma at uh, baseline. And most importantly, the median number of prior systemic regimens was six, going from two to 19. 100% were triple class exposed, 66% were pentadrug exposed, and interestingly, 21% were BCMA exposed. And at the end of the day, 78% uh, were triple class refractory, 38% pentadrug refractory, and 14% uh, were BCMA refractory, while 88% were refractory to the last line of therapy. What about the primary objectives? Looking into the adverse event and more than 20% of the patient, regardless of relationship, we can see around one third of the patient experiencing hematologic uh, toxicity, uh, cytopenia, uh, anemia, neutropenia, uh, thrombocytopenia. Interestingly, uh, the incidence of CRS cytokine release syndrome all grade what 30%, but only two patients, 2% 2 had more than uh, grade uh, three. Uh, there were some additional adverse events of uh, uh, interest. Uh, in terms of neurotoxicity, 22% of the patient had neurological toxicity, but all were grade one and two. 
uh, ICANN's three patients, all grade one. Uh, in terms of infections, and this is something of great importance in the field of uh, bispecific and tri-specific antibodies, uh, we had 24 patients, 25% uh, who experienced more than grade three uh, infection, pneumonia, sepsis, influenza, parainfluenza bacteremia, urinary infection, pyelonephritis, and uh, C. diff uh, and medical device uh, infection. When it comes to deaths, one death was uh, treatment related and four deaths were non-treatment related, uh, especially two cases of myeloma progression, uh, one global health deterioration and one uh, cardiac uh, event. CRS, as I mentioned, uh, only uh, grade one and two, there were two cases of grade three which were seen uh, at the dose level of uh, uh, 24 uh, milligram. In terms of response, uh, we could see uh, at the dosage of 12 milligram target dose cohort, 63% objective response rate, including 53% with more than VGPR. When we looked at the 24 milligram target dose, actually the objective response rate was lower, 45%, and only 33% was more than the VGPR. And actually those patients, especially uh, in the 12 milligram uh, cohort, had some uh, ongoing uh, long duration of response. The median duration of response was uh, 20 Point five uh, uh, months, and it goes from 1.4 to 28 uh, months. Interestingly, the median time to first response, whether it's a 12 milligram or 24, 24 milligram dosage was 1.2 uh, months, and the median time to the best response was 1.9 months. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, this uh, first in human study could show that HPN217 a tri-specific antibody was well tolerated. It has a clinical activity uh, at, uh, uh, in heavily pretreated patients, including patients with prior exposure to BCMA targeted therapy. And when we compare between the highest dose levels administered, the optimal activity and safety profile looks to be around the 12 milligram uh, dose uh, with CRS reported in only 16% of patients. No events of ICANNs reported and of course, the 63% uh, overall response uh, rate was 53% with at least VGPR or better. So 12 milligram has been declared as being the RP2D and obviously uh, the data uh, support further clinical uh, development with this uh, dosage with a step up uh, approach. With this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.